Hi everyone, I'm Susan Mulvihill. I'm going to talk about artichokes today because they are so tasty and they are even better when you've grown them yourself. But there's a couple of things that make them a little challenging, especially if you live in a cooler climate. If you live in a USDA hardiness zone that is below seven, it's pretty hard to get artichoke plants to produce fruit the first year but they don't make it through the winter, so how do you get fruit the second year? That is the conundrum. So the thing is that you need to put both the seeds and later your seedlings through something called the vernalization process. Let me explain what that is and why it's so important. The vernalization process refers to exposing the seeds and the seedlings to cold so that they think that they have been through a winter and that means they're going to grow and develop buds so that they produce fruit in that same year. What you're looking at here in this little container is a couple of packages that I put together about two and a half weeks ago that have both a seed starting mix in them that has been lightly moistened and the seeds. So you can see I've got two different varieties here. And so you put them into the refrigerator for a couple of weeks before you plant them. The other half of the process involves exposing the seedlings that you're getting close to transplanting out in the garden to chilly temperatures, but not to frost for two weeks before you actually plant them in your garden. And once again, it makes them think, oh, I've been through a winter, and so this year I need to produce artichokes. I know this all sounds crazy, but it actually works. Now, one thing I wanted to clarify is that if you live in USDA hardiness zones 7 to 11, you are so lucky because you can grow artichokes as perennials. And that means they are going to grow and produce for you year after year after year. So it's just in cooler climates that we gardeners have to get creative and using this vernalization process is what works. Now you can see I've got Taver artichoke, which is a newer variety this year and it's supposed to be very productive, so I'm excited about that. And then I'm also growing Violetto di Romagna. Another tried and true variety of artichoke is Green Globe. To start your artichoke seeds, you really can use any kind of a seed starting container that you like. What I'm using today is the All Roots seed starting setup from Gardens Alive. I've had it for years and I really like it for starting small to medium sized seeds. It doesn't work well for large seeded vegetables such as beans, peas, corn, and squash. But for artichoke seeds, which are kind of a moderate sized seed, this works really well for me. And it's essentially a hydroponic setup because this styrofoam system here holds little soil plugs and the container is filled with water so you never have to worry about watering them. And they develop the nicest root system. Now in the top of these little soil plugs, you'll notice that there is a hole and that's where the seed gets put. You don't have to cover it, it just goes into that hole. So I've got all of my little soil plugs in place. Now I need to sort out my seeds. This is the bag that had my Taver artichoke seeds in and the only challenging thing is finding the seeds in this mix. Fortunately, they're pretty noticeable and I know I should have 10 because that's how many came in the seed packet. So I'm just going through until I find 10. <laughs> So far, so good. The next step is to put the seeds into the holes in the top of the little soil plugs. The next thing I like to do is sprinkle a very light layer of finely milled sphagnum moss 
on the top of the little soil plugs. This is a natural substance that inhibits the growth of a nasty fungal disease called damping off syndrome. And that disease can wipe out a flat of seedlings like you wouldn't believe. So it's just a very inexpensive little insurance policy to make sure the plants are okay. The next step is for me to fill this water reservoir with water to where this grid is floating in the water. And then I'm going to put a clear plastic dome lid over the top. And what that will do is increase the humidity to in turn help the seeds to sprout. I just put the tray underneath my grow light and you can see it's got some company there too. In the middle is a bunch of little pony packs of leek seedlings that I'm growing. And to the left is where I have another all root seed starting setup that's smaller. And in it, I have some celery seeds that I'm hoping will germinate soon. I wanted to give you a quick update on how the seedlings are doing. I have been feeding them with a diluted liquid nitrogen fertilizer every so often. And you'll notice these pointed leaves here, which are true leaves. That means the mature leaves of the plant. And each of these seedlings has a really good root system so far. So that means it's time for me to up pot them into larger containers. And for those containers, I'll be using a potting soil. Here's the first seedling repotted. And once I have all of the other ones in their pots, I'm going to put them under plant light again and keep feeding them with a liquid nitrogen fertilizer about once every week to 10 days. Now, two weeks before our last frost, and in this area, that would be about the 1st of May, I'm going to move these outdoors and expose them to somewhat chilly temperatures. I don't want them to get frosted, of course, but what that exposure to cool temperatures does is it also vernalizes the seedlings. It makes them think they've been through a winter. And so with a little luck, we're gonna have a great season of artichokes. Now, since this video isn't coming out early enough for you to have vernalized your seeds, here's what I'd recommend you do this year. Go ahead and vernalize your seedlings by taking them outdoors two weeks before your last expected frost in your region and expose them to the cool temperatures just like what I'm going to do. And then go ahead and plant them after the danger of frost has passed into your garden. Next year, do both things. So go ahead and vernalize your seeds right at the beginning of your seed starting season and then go ahead and vernalize the seedlings two weeks before your last frost. Now my plan is to continue to add to this video all through the season so you can see how the plants grow and hopefully produce. And that way you'll know how to grow artichokes from start to finish.